Hello everyone and welcome back to the next lecture of control systems. In this presentation, we are going to discuss zeros and poles of a transfer function. So let's get started. We will first see the definition of zeros and poles. Zeros of a transfer function are the frequencies, that is the values of s, for which the numerator of the transfer function becomes zero. And poles of a transfer function are the frequencies that is the values of s for which the denominator of the transfer function becomes zero. We will take one example to understand zeros and poles in a better manner and the example is given as find the transfer function of the system given by this differential equation where xt is the input and yt is the output. We have calculated the transfer functions of many such systems in the previous lectures and we all know that the transfer function is the Laplace transform of output to the Laplace transform of input by keeping all the initial conditions equal to zero. So moving on to the solution, the first step is to find out the Laplace transform for this differential equation. So if we find out the Laplace transform and if we put all the initial conditions equal to zero, then we will get s square ys plus 7s multiplied by s plus 12ys is equal to sxs plus 2 multiplied xs. Now we have ys common on the left hand side and xs common on the right hand side. So if we take ys common on the left hand side, then we will get ys multiplied s square plus 7s plus 12. And if we take xs common on the right hand side, then we will get xs multiplied with s plus 2. If we transpose xs on the left hand side, and if we transpose this factor s square plus 7s plus 12 on the right hand side, then we will get ys over xs is equal to s plus 2 divided by s square plus 7s plus 12. If we factorize this term, then we will get the transfer function is equal to s plus 2 divided by s plus 3 multiplied with s plus 4. And this is the transfer function for this system. So now we have our transfer function, which is hs equal to s plus 2 divided by s plus 3 multiplied with s plus 4. Let us talk about zeros and poles for this transfer function. So we already know that zeros are the values of s for which the numerator of the transfer function becomes zero. That means if we equate the numerator of transfer function equal to zero, then we will get the zeros of this transfer function. And for this transfer function, we have only one zero, which is s equal to minus two. So the zero for this transfer function we can say is equal to minus two. Similarly, if we talk about poles of this transfer function, then poles are the values of s for which the denominator of transfer function becomes zero. Or in the other words, the transfer function becomes infinite. Because if the denominator is equal to zero, then the value of fraction becomes infinite. It means that if we equate this denominator equal to zero, then we will have the poles of this transfer function s equal to minus three and s equal to minus four. It means that there are two poles, minus three and minus four. So now we are done finding the zeros and poles for this transfer function. And if we want to plot these zeros and poles in the S plane, then we can plot it by using the pole zero diagram. The pole zero diagram is the plot on S plane, which represents the locations of poles and zeros of a transfer function. In a pole zero diagram, the poles are represented by a cross and the zeros are represented by a circle. So if we want to represent the poles and zeros of this transfer function on a pole zero diagram, then we will have this S plane in which X axis is the sigma axis, which is the real part of S and the Y axis is the j omega axis which is the imaginary part of s. So we are having the zero at s equal to minus two. So we are having a circle at s equal to minus two which will represent the position of a zero at s equal to minus two for this transfer function. Similarly, we are having two poles at s equal to minus three and at s equal to minus four. So we will have one cross at s equal to minus three and one cross at s equal to minus four. And this is the pole zero diagram for the poles and zeros for this transfer function. So now we are done with the introduction of zeros and poles for a transfer function. 
and we have also discussed the pole zero diagram by which we can represent the zeros and poles on an S plane. Now let us understand the zeros and poles for a general transfer function. So we are having a general form of transfer function which is given as transfer function equal to s minus z1 multiplied with s minus z2 multiplied with s minus z3 and so on up to s minus zn divided by s minus p1 multiplied with s minus p2 s minus p3 and so on up to s minus pn. This transfer function shows that it is having n number of zeros and n number of poles. So if we try to plot zeros for this transfer function, then we will have zeros at s equal to z1, z2, z3 and so on up to zn because we are having n number of zeros. Similarly, if we plot poles, then we will have poles at s equal to p1, p2, p3 and so on up to pn. So we are having n number of poles. So these are the zeros and poles for a general form of transfer function. And now we are done with this lecture. Try these questions on your own and when you get the answer, post them in the comment section. Thank you for watching this lecture. I'll end this lecture here. See you in the next one.